stop all the ends. He won a call. Sing it, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Anado, Anado, so we lift our holy hands. He won a call, singing, blessed be the name. Hallelujah, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are worthy, you are worthy to be praised and adored. Anado, so we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Hallelujah, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Of the Lord, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Is worthy, is worthy to be praised and adored, and So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing blessed be, hallelujah, blessed, oh, blessed be the day of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your day. Lord, we lift up your day. With a heart full of praise, with my heart full of praise, be exalted, O Lord, my God. O Sana in the eye, O Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name with my heart full of praise, with my heart full of be exalted, O Lord, 
be exalted, O Lord our God. O Sana in the eye, O Lord, I lift up your name, Lord, I lift with my heart full of praise, my heart full of be exalted, O Lord, exalted, O Lord, our God, O Sana in the eye, O Lord, I lift up your name. Oh, with my heart full of praise, be exalted, O oh Lord, be exalted, Lord our God, O oh, Sana in the eye. Yes, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the high, ah, yeah, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the ah, ah, yeah. Oh, Lord, Lord, we lift up your, oh, Lord, I lift up your name. With my heart full of, with my heart full of praise, be exalted, O Lord my God, O Sana in the eye. Yes, O Lord, I lift up your name, Lord, I lift up your, oh, with my heart full of praise, with my heart full of, oh, be exalted, oh, Lord, be exalted, oh, Lord. Ah, God, Hosanna in the ah, ah, yeah. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. And power for that was created. All things are for thy pleasure. They are our created. Thou was worthy, Lord. Thou was worthy, O Worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, and power for thou art created. All things are for thy pleasure, they are. Our Creator, Thou art worthy, Lord. Thou art worthy, O 
Wadiola to receive glory, honor, and power, and power for the work created. All things are for thy pleasure, they are. How I created there is none holy as our God, as our Lord. There is none beside thee, oh, beside thee, neither is there are any rock. Like our God, there is none holy as a God, holy as a Lord. There is none holy as our God, holy as Jesus. There is none, there is none. Beside, oh, beside thee, neither is there a any rock like our God. There is no holy as a holy as a God. There is no. Holy as our, holy as Jesus, there is no, there is no beside, oh, beside thee, neither is there are any rock like our God, there is no. Holy as a holy as a Lord, there is no faithful as our God, faithful as Jesus, there is, there is no beside, oh, beside the old, neither is. There are any rock like our God. There is no faithful as a mercy as a God. There is no holy as a Holy as Jesus, there is no beside, oh, beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God, there is no holy. He can never, never change. He can never, never change. He can never, never change. Jesus the same forever. Hallelujah. He can never, never change. He never change. He can never, never change. He can never, never change. Jesus the same for it. Hallelujah. He can never, never change. He never change. He can never, never change. Hallelujah. He can never, never change. Jesus the same for it. Hallelujah, he can never, never change. He never change, he can never, never change. He change it not, he can never, never change. Jesus the same for it. 
Alleluia, he can never, never, he never change, he changes not, he can never, never change, Jesus the same forever, Alleluia, he can never, never, he never change. He changes not, he can never, never change. Jesus the same forever. God, you are so good. You are worthy to be of my praise. God, you are so good. You are exalted. You are the most high God. Father, we exalt you. You are the most high God. You are worthy to receive all of our praise. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence once again tonight. Daddy, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness, your protection. Thank you for your love over our life. Thank you for preserving us. Blessed Redeemer, we appreciate you. In your presence, indeed, there is fullness of joy. We thank you for your joy sweeping away every plan of the enemy, which is sorrow in our life once again today in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we are on the winning side and our victory will be permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we come before your throne of mercy once again today to learn at your feet, send forth your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said it, it is written in your word that the entrance of the word of God giveth light. We pray that the light in the word of God will take away darkness in our life today in the mighty name of Jesus. You also said in your word that the entrance of the word of God, it gives life. We pray that you will breathe your life through your word into our life today once again, and death will disappear, sorrow will disappear in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we come before you today, Lord, we pray the word of truth. You said we shall know the truth, and the truth that we know shall set us free. Lord, let your Holy Spirit send it into our life and give us a clear understanding of your gift and of your ways in the mighty name of Jesus. For as many that are here, Lord, to partake in this, uh, in, in this teaching and as many that are here to online to also partake, Lord, the word that you will send forth to us today. Daddy, let it bring the desire Lord, to crave for that gift of yours alone in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that as for those of us that are here, that we are eager for the gift of, your, of, 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 of the Holy Spirit, the, 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 word, the, the prophecy, and the, 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 the speaking of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Daddy, Lord, you said when we ask, it shall be given unto us. Lord, I pray today, Lord, Endow us and fill us afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, before we leave this place, O oh Lord, Daddy, just as you did on the day of or, or the day of Pentecost, Lord, rain your Holy Spirit gift upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill us till we want no more in the mighty name of Jesus. You said this sign shall follow those who believe. Daddy, I pray. Today, for us, us that have been filled already with that Holy Spirit, Lord, fill us more and more in the name of Jesus. And for those of us that are still looking unto you, Daddy, as they come unto you and believe today, Lord, Lord, through your baptism of Holy Ghost fire, let there be your signs and wonders revealed in their life tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. As those that are also watching online, let there be a release, Lord, of your Holy Ghost fire also upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, tonight break barrier. Let pop 
be fulfilled. Because only when you fill us with your Holy Spirit, we can fulfill purpose. So we pray, Lord, the power that you have promised to give to us. You said you will not leave us comfortless. Lord, you did it for the disciples. They were tired. Daddy, they don't know which way. But when on the day of Pentecost came, Daddy, you filled them with your, with, with your promise and with your gift. And they were never the same again. Daddy, your, your, your purpose for us is to succeed as your disciples. To succeed as your children. To succeed as your workers. Daddy, tonight... Fill us with your Holy Spirit that will take away failure permanently in the mighty name of Jesus. Glorify your name in all our life. At the end of today's service, O oh Lord, Daddy, let there be already testimony that we receive the visitation of God in our midst. And your name alone be glorified. In Jesus, Lord, mighty name, we pray. Let somebody shout a loud hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yes, you can have your seat. My beloved daughter, yes, you are. I can see that you are ready to receive. You will not leave here empty in Jesus' name. I want to welcome each and every one of us to God's presence. It's always good to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. King David said, in his presence, there is what? There is fullness of joy. Whatever that I've pursued you, everything that the devil has as planned, that joy will not prevail in your life. Simply because we are here tonight, every of his plan will not prevail over you and I in the mighty name of Jesus. The plan of God of joy will overflow in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. We will sing new songs. The Lord will ordain his praise once again, on our lips and in our mouth, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank God for today's uh, digging deep, where we study the Bible deep and deeper. And today we are looking at the Holy Spirit, part 11. Holy Spirit, part 11. God, God the Holy Spirit, part 11. And a quick recap on what we study in part 10 last week. Because last week we started a new series on God the Holy Spirit where we look at the revelation gifts which was uh, 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 one, uh, the for, one, first of the inspirational gift. Previous week, we have been looking at Revelation gift where we talk about the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the designing of the spirit. So last week, we started a new series where we look at inspirational gifts. And we said that when we're talking about inspirational gift, there are three types of this gift. Who can tell me one? You want to go and start to look at your notes? Okay, I give you one of the three is prophecy. Last week we talked a lot about prophecy. And the one we are going to talk about today, we are going to talk about two. So to make the, we, are, we said there are three inspirational gifts, but we are going to talk about the two remaining today. The two remaining are diverse, diverse kind of tongues, this is the topic because I, I, I believe that if you have any questions you want to ask, please start to write it in because I will give room for your questions. Also, among the, among the inspirational gifts of the Holy Spirit that the Lord gave to his children, the believers, is diverse kind of tongues. That's the second one. And the third one, which we are going to talk about also, are the, and the interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. So I talk about study briefly. I told you the past study, we look at prophecy. Am I right? 
So can you tell me how many kind of prophecy do we have? How many sources of prophecies, sources of prophecy that we mentioned last week? Sources of prophecies. Let's try, let's try. Can somebody try also online if you are watching with us, please? If you are a candidate that follow it up, we have three sources of prophecy. Ah, you need to get your book. Praise the Lord. Okay. Because of time. Number one, we talk about in the three sources of prophecy, we have Satan. That's the devil. Oh, the devil, the Satan prophesies and his agent, yes, because they got their information from, the, from Satan himself. And we also got the second one, which is the human spirit. The human spirit also gives prophecy. And the third one is the Holy Spirit. Prophecy that came through the Holy Spirit. But one important thing that I want to just highlight for us before we go ahead into today's teaching that we learned last week, we learned a lot of good things last week that we must, if you are a particular of, of being in the, in, the, in the digging deep, by now nobody can confuse you about prophecy because you are able to know true prophecy and fake or false prophecy. So how can we differentiate between true prophecy and fake prophecy? Can you help me? Huh? Ma, how can we differentiate between true prophecy and fake prophecy? Or false prophecy? What are the characteristics of true prophecy? When we say person is speaking true prophecy, he has characteristics. Number one is fulfillment. Hallelujah. What he say will come to pass. Hallelujah. Number two is the prophecy have condition that is attached to it. If we have a condition that is what? That we attach to it. You saw when Elijah was saying there will not be rain, he said until there will be a condition uh, attached to it. There will not be rain until I say there will be rain. So when we talk about characteristic of true prophecy, it also stays in agreement with God's word. Last week I told us already, show us God's word that said, if they worship idol, there will not be rain. And it must also have public acknowledgments. Because God wants to glorify himself in all that he's doing. And for you to know true prophecy, it must also have purity of the vessel. That is, the person that wants to talk about 
the prophecy must live a holy life. And the last one, the spirit of the message. You know, the Bible said that the spirit also will bear witness. Hallelujah. With our spirit. When a person is saying things that is not in the spirit, the spirit will tell you he's not saying the right thing. Hallelujah. But when he's saying the right thing, the spirit is there will bear. So for us to know True prophecy, we must run all these characteristics. Hallelujah. But like I said to us, there are also what we call false prophecy and fake prophecy. How can we know false prophecy? Yes, it opposes the word of God, the truth. Ma? Yes. It opposes the word of God. It also, it supports sin. It, among it is failure to expose sin because of his own holy life. He will be pampering them. And you will see it, all the attention is on what do you owe me? Money. Hallelujah. So I believe we all know already how to recognize true prophecy and fake prophecy. Am I right? So in today's lesson, we want to study the two other gifts that are in the group together. What are those gifts? One, the diverse kind of tongues. Two, the interpretation of tongues. My prayer today is that may the Lord satisfy our test for spiritual gifts today in Jesus' name. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10. That's the passage we have been reading so much this month of mercy. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. He says, To another the working of miracle, to another prophecy, to another the signing of spirit, to another different kind of tongue, to another the interpretation of tongues. So, Let's look at tongues, speaking in tongues. I want us to have a clear understanding that our tongues are focal miracle. Our tongues are what? Vocal miracle. Diverse kind of tongue has nothing to do with linguistic ability. It's not about linguistic, how you know how to speak English. But rather, they are supernatural utterance. Supernatural utterance. And by, by the Holy Spirit, in, language, in languages never learned by the speaker. You will just see them. They will be listening. But the, the, the person that is Speaking, don't even understand. Don't forget that I said to us that tongues are vocal miracle. And when we come to interpretation on the other hand, he revealed the meaning of what was said in tongues. 
Therefore, both normally go hand in hand. Because both of them are vocal, vocal miracles. When we look at interpretation on the other hand, supernaturally it reveals the meaning of what was said in tongues. Therefore, both normally go hand in hand. Let's look at Mark 16, verse 17. Mark 16, verse 17. I said it when I was praying. He said, and this sign will follow those who believe. Listen, and this sign, what sign? Also seen in tongues. Hallelujah. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. The scripture is telling us something here. There is a great gift of the Almighty God waiting for many of us today. I told us that God has sent us for a purpose. If somebody sends somewhere, so, send somebody somewhere for a purpose, he will definitely back the person up with whatever the person will need at the place he sent him. So I pray that God will open the eyes of many of us that instead of appreciating God, we are just complaining. The Bible says at this time we follow those who believe. The question is, do you really believe Jesus? Do you really believe He said, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13, he also confirmed it. He said, therefore, let him who speak in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15. He said, yet in church, I would rather speak five words. And I want us to take this into very... He said, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach other also than 10,000 words in a tongue. If you look at this text, you will say, ah, what is Apostle Paul saying here? Hallelujah. He was laying emphasis on interpretation of tongues. And that is why he craved, he really craved for God to fill him. And he's using it as an example. Say, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. If you look also at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 27 to 28, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 27 to 28, he said, if anyone speak in a tongue, let there be two or at most three, each in tongue. And let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in thought. And let him speak to himself and to God. If there is no interpreter, what you say he should do? During the service, he should keep quiet. So Apostle Paul was talking to us here that, listen, when we have these gifts of speaking in tongues, there must be moderation. 
we should not just everybody start to speak in tongues on, unless what happened in, on the day of Pentecost. But now, when you are walking in spirits and you are speaking in tongues, you must not be more than two. Maximum, only three. And there must be an organization that must be organized. And probably look for one interpreter. He said, but if there is no interpreter, then let all these speakers, or those of them that are speaking in tongues, let them keep silent in the church. Hallelujah. I want us to also have a clear understanding of why we have to pray in the spirit all the time. Also praying without ceasing is only possible if we pray both with understanding and with tongues. Listen, it says ceasing is only possible if we pray both with understanding and with tongues. If you look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 and 4, 1 Corinthians verse 2 and 4, it says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4, Say, he who speak in a tongue edifies, but he who prophesies edifies the church. He who speak in tongue edify himself, but he who prophesy edify the church. Please, I need uh, the meaning of edify. We used to get by and by, and then people bamboos us with so many things. Amen. When we say edify, it means you instruct or something improve. And the Bible tells us, I mean, it's telling us, who, he who speak in a tongue, you edify. That means you instruct. But he who prophesies also edify the church. When you are speaking in tongues, it's only about you. But when you start to prophesy, you church. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15, and, uh, uh, verse 14, verse 15, and then verse 18. He gave us a clearer picture. He said, for if I pray in tongue. Apostle Paul was the one talking. He said, listen, if I pray in tongue, my spirit pray. Uh-huh. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit. I will also pray with understanding. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So I pray that God will give us a, a open heart. You see, what Apostle Paul is saying that I'm not against any one of it. Oh, you want to pray with understanding and then say your prayer, glory be to God. But, or you want to only pray in the spirit. In the presence of God, there is liberty. So he gave room for that. And he was explaining to the people of Corinthians. And he told them that if whenever he pray in tongue, the spirit within him pray. Man is made 
of three beings. Three. We have body, soul, and spirit. And he is confessing that every time that he prays in spirit, Every time he pray in spirit, this my, his spirit also pray, but lacking in understanding, is unfruitful. He said, "What is the conclusion? Then? What? How do I conclude it? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding." So. I want also to have interpretation or understanding. I will sing with the Spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. I will explain for us why about that later. And in a place in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 14, verse 18, Apostle Paul was telling them that I thank my God I speak with tongue more than you all. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, what is the purpose of tongues and the interpretation? Brethren, I want to tell us there are several reasons why God could give the gift of diverse kind of tongues. There are several reasons that God could give the gift of diverse kind of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Many reasons. That's why I want us to please get ready tonight. Don't say, oh, you know, I want to share something with us. Ah, I'm not speaking in tongue and somebody is speaking in tongue and you start to look at the person or you feel somehow. Hallelujah. I say, what are they doing now? Huh? What are they doing? I will explain to you today. Hallelujah. So, looking at the purpose, you know, when the purpose of something is known, it will help us to shape. And we are talking about purpose of tongues and interpretation. And I told you, it's not one, it's not two. There are several reasons why God could give you the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Number one, 1 Corinthians for, uh, chapter 14, verse 21 to 22. You want to read it? First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21 to 22. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to get this. He said, he said in the, the Apostle Paul was at, addressing the people of Corinthians through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he said, with men of other tongues, just like what we say. That's what God said. He said, he will, with men of others, he will speak to his people. And yet, they will not do what? They will not hear me. They will not conceal or surrender to me. So, so therefore, tongues are for what? A sign. So don't tell me that a Christian cannot sing, cannot, cannot uh, speak in tongues. He said, this sign shall follow those who what? The question is, do you believe in it? Hallelujah. And God will not force you. The, I, I can tell you there are some people that are in Thailand for many years and they decide not to speak Thai language. And there are some people that just came in six months. They are speaking fluently. 
Because it's what you desire to accept it. God is not going to force you about it. You open your heart to it and you will receive it. And there are some people in this country, they came not up to this month, they are even writing in Thai. Hallelujah. And that's why Apostle Paul was saying it, that tongues are for a sign. A child of God, the Bible says, we and our children, we are meant for what? Signs and wonders. So when we are talking about tongues, Speaking in tongues, they are for a sign. And Apostle Paul was explaining to the people of Corinthians that not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. So unbelievers will see us that say, ah, just like what happened on the day of Pentecost. They say, man, these people, what are you all doing? Are they drunk? Thank God Peter said, we are not drunk. We are filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Act chapter 2. Because the believers saw a sign. 3,000 of them gave their life to Jesus. I pray for all of us. When the Holy Spirit starts to move in our life, we speaking in tongues, God will use us to touch the life of unbelievers and they will surrender to God in Jesus' name. Thousands, many numbers. Hallelujah. So, therefore, tongues are for a sign. And like I said, not for those who believe. So every child of God that already knows you are a child of God, you, you don't need, you need to get that sign be seen in your life. Amen. But to unbelievers, that is what it's meant for. But when we talk about prophesying, ah, some believers are not the partaker of it because God wants to reveal secret to us. Hallelujah. So, prophesying is for those who already believe. Hallelujah. So, I will tell us some of these purpose, purposes of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Number one, tongues could be given as a sort of secret code. Hallelujah. As a sort of what? Secret code. No, we also, we want to make something that other people will not understand. Hallelujah. And it will be something that is connected. You know, so tongue is given. When we pray in tongues, the enemy don't even know what we are praying for. But the Father... Hallelujah. You see the benefit. Some, you just start to speak in tongue. How God has laid it in your heart. And you are praying gently. Even you sit down. And you will see something happening around you. You see God doing mighty things. I want to share an experience with us. Sometimes ago. Years ago. We went to Nigeria. And. I have to come back because of my work. And that time, you cannot uh, confirm your flight on computer. We have to go to the office. And when we got to the office, oh my God, it was full. And where I came from was very far. You cannot go and say you want to come back. God, will I get seat on this flight? It's full. People are there already before us. And it's super, super duper full. I went with one of my friends who also is a pastor. He's in Australia now. He's in Australia. We are both from Redeem. So we look at ourselves. Our queue is very far. We have over 100 or something people in front of us. God. And we look at ourselves. He go this side and go this side. We start to speak in tongue. We start to speak in tongue. We 
we just don't talk to anybody again. Everybody on his own, without making noise. My daughter, I tell you, we left the place within 20 minutes. God opened the door for us. And I got confirmed I was able to travel without any problem. It's like Red Sea was just opening. Hallelujah. It was miraculous. Hallelujah. So, when we start to, when, uh, tongues could be given as a sort of secret code. Hallelujah. And also when God wants to reveal his mind over an issue to his servant only. When God wants to speak over an issue to his servant only, of course. With his permission, the mystery so learned could be revealed while preaching the gospel. God can speak. So, let, 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 let's see. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, the Bible was telling us, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have what? The mind of Christ. I want us to read Amos 3, verse 7. You want to read Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Amos. Amos. A-M-O-S. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Hallelujah. You see, secret codes. God will not do anything unless he do what? He reveals his secret to his servant, the prophet. He will tell them. So that's why you see many times when you go to the pastors or, and you start to explain it, God has already revealed secret to them. They will just smile at you. Hallelujah. Because they spend their time. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine to ten. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine to ten. He said, "But as it is written, eyes has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the thing which God has prepared for those who love Him." Listen, verse ten. Now make it clear. He said, "But God has revealed them to us." Through what? His spirit. For the spirit search all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Oh, I don't want to speak in tongues. I don't want to know anything. You are missing out. You are not connecting your spirit. Because it's you don't need to live your life as a Christian only just at the surface. Jesus said, those that worship me must worship me what? In spirit and in truth. These are the true worshipers. So you have to worship Jesus in what? In spirit and in truth. So you need to go deeper. Like what we have today is digging deep. Hallelujah. And Apostle Paul is telling us in that first Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. He said, But God has revealed them to us through what? His spirit. God is a spirit. And those that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. And the Bible says, For the spirit searches all things. Yes. The deep things of God. It's deep. Hallelujah. Things of God is not on the surface. So you want to go, you want to know things of God, you must go deeper. Deeper, deeper. In the name of Jesus. 
deeper, let me go. Aya, aya, in the school of wisdom. Oh, deeper, oh, deeper, yet yeah, I pray. And I, I every day, and wiser, 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 blessed Lord, in the precious holy world. I pray that the Lord will give us the grace to go deeper in spirit and reveal to us through his spirit all things in the name of Jesus. Another purpose of the gift of speaking in tongue and interpretation is to assist us to grow in spirit as we grow in age. Hallelujah. I pray that as we are growing in age, we will also grow in spirit in the name of Jesus. That's an important word that it is written in the word of God. Say, I pray that thou will prosper as your soul do what? Prosper. So it's going to be a balance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as we are growing also physically, we must be growing also spiritually. Now that you are 20 years, but your spirit is 10 years. Uh, that's a big disparity, right? A big gap. Oh, you are 30 years, your spirit is 10 years. 20 years gap. Hallelujah. But when we have the Holy Spirit, it will assist us to also grow in spirit as we grow in age. When we look at John chapter 16, verse 13. John chapter 16, verse 13. He said, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will guide you. So when you are having the, 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 the growth in the spirit, you will be guided at all times. And it goes for that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. He said, And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Hallelujah. So I will open my mouth to make known the mystery of the gospel. And he continues in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. He said, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God will open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in shame. This is this is Apostle Paul that was praying this. Was asking the people to keep praying so that you will be vigilant. It's not so that praying also for him. So that we know the mystery of Christ for which is also in chain. You need to grow in the spirit. You need to know why am I in this situation. You need to know what is happening. Not only just to talk and turn things into Another uh, way that the devil will be happy, but rather the way that we glorify God. And you can see what the Bible said in Luke chapter 1, verse 80. Luke chapter 1, verse 80. When I said that we need to grow in proportion in spirit as we are growing physically. And yet they are talking about Jesus Christ. He says, so the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the desert, desert till the day of his manifestation to Israel. If 
you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 40, Luke chapter 2, verse 40, he said, And his eye grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. It must be balance. Hallelujah. If you are just growing without growing in spirit, ah, it is very, very dangerous. Hallelujah. But if you are growing and you are growing also in spirit at the same time, the Bible said that he is filled with wisdom. Not only that, the grace of God will be upon you. What an advantage. You have the wisdom. You are already an overcomer. And you have grace of God. Unlimited overcomer. And the Bible said that he became strong physically. And strong also in spirit. That is what he called balance growth. So these are the purpose, second purpose for the gift of tongues and interpretation. Number three, also purpose of this is to build us up and establish us in faith. Not only for us to grow, but to be built up and to be established in faith. So nothing will shake us. Hallelujah. And you can see what Apostle Paul was telling to the people of Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. He said, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people. But I speak to you, uh, uh, but as to Cana, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you are not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. You see, because why? They are not stable. They are not built up. They don't have the faith. And he's talking to them. But the book of Jude, verse 20, told us, maintain your life with God. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in what? Praying in what? Jude 20. Praying in the Holy Spirit. How do you pray in the Holy Spirit? You are together, you are praying, and people are doing things, and you are praying. Hallelujah. You maintain your life with God. Praying in spirit. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7, it told us, but as you are bound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us. See that you are bound in this grace also. You see? In this grace that you are unshakable, in this grace that you can hold on, in this grace that you not let anything disrupt you. Establish and build up. And Apostle Paul was talking to the people of Corinthians. He said, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you are enriched in everything by him, in all utterance and all knowledge. So them, they are built up. You say, you are what? I'm happy for you because I can see the grace you are operating on because they have the purpose is to be fulfilled. They are built up and uh, and they are established in faith. The fourth purpose of 
tongues, diverse kinds of tongues and uh, interpretation is to assist us in control use of our tongues. Ah, control use of what? Our tongues. Instead of speaking negative things, you are talking with God. So you will not be angry. You will not be worried. You will not be thinking of any wrong thing. Because you know you are talking with God. Amen? So he assists us to control the use of our tongues. You know, tongue is very powerful and strong. But when we use it to be praising God, you cannot use it to say anything evil at that same time. So that's why Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. He told us, he said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. You see? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. He said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification? That it may impart grace to the error. So you see, good word will come out. That is what will be coming out from your mouth. So, you will see that the Holy Spirit will help you to assist, to control the use of your tongue. Hallelujah. So, the fifth purpose of gifts of diverse of tongues and interpretation is that he helped us to get out of tight situation. Like I just explained to you about our flight that I want to connect. And here, our daddy gave us a very clear one in the book of Daniel chapter 5. In Daniel chapter 5, there was a king who happened to be the son of Nebuchadnezzar. You know, he, has, he, 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 was, he was drunk and he wanted to show off that his king. He told them to bring out all the vessels that they brought from, golden vessels that they brought from the temple in uh, in, in in uh, Israel and let the people start to use it to drink wine. And immediately something was written on the wall. They saw the hand, but they don't see who, is, who, who wrote it. Hallelujah. And he said, all astrologers, people that are there, tell me the meaning of this. Nobody can tell him. And then they told him, listen, there was a man in your kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy God, in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding, like the wisdom of God, were found in him. He said, and King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, shadians, and soothsayers. Verse 12 says, Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigma were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Betisaja. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. <laughs> you know what he told the, the king? The king said, I will give you this. I said, Keep your gift. Your days are already numbered. <laughs> That's the meaning that was there. God has numbered your kingdom and he has finished it. You have been weighed in balances and found one thing. Your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Pasha. And so it was as happened. So, people of God, when we are talking about the gift of speaking in tongues, he has several 
beneficial purposes. I've explained to us, it can help us to come out of tight situation. Not only that, it will assist us in the control use of our tongues. It can also help us so that we will build up our faith yeah you build us up and we'll be establish us in faith you build us up and we establish us in faith and uh, when we grow also physically, we can grow also in spirits. It will assist us to grow in spirit as we grow also in age, which is very important. And lastly, number one that we look at it helps us also to have access to secret codes. And also, you know, the secret codes are the mind of God. When others are panicking, you know the mind of God, you just say, uh, don't worry, all is well. And you say, why this one just... We don't see our trouble. We don't see him trouble. They are just, ah, it's because he know the mind of God concerning the situation. So let's go further and explain about the purpose of interpretation of the tongues. Another reason that interpretation of tongues is given might be to glorify God among heavens. Let's read Acts chapter 2 verse 4 to 8. God wants to glorify himself. Acts chapter 2 verse 4 to 8. Can you please read for us? Hmm. Okay, go ahead. Confuse. Yes. Uh huh. Verse seven. They were all amazed. Uh huh. Hallelujah. God. Wants to glorify himself. You see? This is the day of Pentecost. After the Holy Ghost rested on all those that are present at the upper chamber. The people came. They are hearing people speaking in different, in diverse tongues. They are Galileans. But they are speaking languages of other places. What was God doing there? The people are giving glory to God. This is practically a miracle. Hallelujah. 
so when we talk about the interpretation of other uh, uh, interpretation of tongues, it comes sometimes for God want to give glory to Himself. I've been in a place. It was in one church service. And they asked people to pray, as stand up to pray. People were already. I was giving, speaking in tongues. The person that was not too far is the only one that understands. And it was the language of that person. And telling her, ah, giving instructions. And God's name was glorified. Imagine if that woman just sit down and don't go to church that day. She would have missed out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, brethren, above all, the greatest purpose of tongues and interpretation is to prepare us for heaven. So that we can all understand one another when we get to heaven. Do you understand me? It's heaven language. Hallelujah. So, as a candidate of heaven, we have where we come from and where we, have, where we are destined to go. So, if you already start to speak the language and flourishing in it, it is not difficult for you to go back to your home and speak the same language. But if you cannot speak the language, the people will be looking at you as like a foreigner. Am I right? So that's why it's a great advice for us to open our heart. It's not to think it's not meant for me. Uh, I don't want to be seen as uh, uh, as a uh, uh, Christian that is so much into it. I just want to be a normal Christian. You are missing out. You are missing out. If you know how people that speak their language relate with one another, if they speak their language, it's different. Am I right? If you speak with somebody, don't speak your language. But if you speak with somebody that speaks your language, he, he bring a kind of connection. Are you getting my... Yeah. You know that we are deeper. And you know? So this is why I want to encourage all of us. The gifts are available for us. That's why I, I show us the Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 8. Our life supposed to bring glory to God is supposed to be for signs and wonders for unbelievers to see glory of God in our life. But we have a part to play. We must surrender. Listen, before the day of Pentecost came, Jesus asked them to go and wait. And the Bible said they were there together in one accord. Waiting for the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit to come on them. And when he came, None of them was left behind. So, if you are a child of God, you too need to surrender yourself to God. Ask Him to fill you afresh. And I can tell you, your life will never be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, please. I told you I will have a lot of room for questions and for observation comments, you are all welcome. Yes, sir. Get the mic now. Give the mic. To... According to the Bible and our study today, the word is clear that those who speak in tongues without interpretation should keep silent in the church. 
why don't we observe this rule in the church? Praise the Lord. To speak in tongues for preaching is not, uh, I don't see that happening in our church, but if we are praying, you can speak in tongues. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, a rule. People that speak in tongues can pray in tongues. People that are yet to be filled to the brim, they just need to pray for God to give them. But if it is preaching like this, and I start to speak in tongues, it's not what is allowed. It's not what Apostle Paul said. Hallelujah. Let us understand in that 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Please read for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. 33. For God is not an author of confusion. Uh -huh. So it is very clear. He even said, when two are already, I, 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 which I showed to us, uh, Apostle Paul said something that I want to read also for us in this text. In 1 Corinthians, Uh -huh. Let's read this First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 to 15. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 to 15. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 to 15. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, my spirit pray. uh -huh. but my understanding is unfruitful. Uh -huh. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So an important thing we need to know is that when we speak in a tongue, we are edifying ourselves. Improving ourselves. So, if we are in a prayer meeting and the person is praying in spirit, he's not speaking to us, he's speaking to God. You don't need to worry yourself about him or her. Are you understand me now? Ah, so we want to hear what he's praying, it's not your problem. That's why people miss it. So, but he's not preaching to you, he's praying. And he's trying to pray it in spirit. It's different. So, but if the person is preaching the way I'm preaching now, it's not, you cannot be preaching and be speaking in tongues to preach because they don't understand you. Unless you, 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 you speak in tongues and then you interpret it. Just like what is being said here. Just like what is being said here. That if you look 1 Corinthians 14, 27 to 28. 1 Corinthians 14, 27 to 28. He said, if anyone speak in a tongue, listen, let there be two, or at each in tongue, and let one interpret. So it does say that even in the, like I said, maybe we are praying and somebody, he can speak in tongue. Don't get yourself. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Amen. It's very simple. It doesn't say keep silent, don't speak in tongue. No. If there's an interpreter, he can speak. But if there's no, just keep yourself to God. I pray to God. I'm talking to God. Yeah, it's okay. It's allowed. It's you and God. Okay, sir. 
Any other questions, sir? Okay, it's on YouTube. If you speak in tongues, did you yourself understand what you speak in tongues? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I told you it's two ways. You have two gifts. We are talking of diverse tongues and interpretation of tongues. There are people that speak in tongues and have the interpretation. There are people that only speak in tongue and they don't have the interpretation. Because they speak, the language is a mystery. So it's not compulsory, you have to, you have to form it in your head and start to speak. It came out of, we talked, I thought last week about inspiration. It's different. It's an inspirational gift. It comes from inside. And that is from, from your spiritual being. You have to be connected to it. And the only way you are there is to surrender yourself. It's not about you. Like the people that are Galileans in the Bible in Acts chapter 2. They don't even know what they are speaking. It's other people that come around know what they are speaking. So it's not mandated that the tongue you are speaking, you have to know it. Except somebody that is gifted to know about the interpretation. So these are all the questions that people need to take out then they can flow also speaking in tongues. Okay, any other question? Doctor, do we have any other questions, sir? <laughs> ah, it's a gift. You have to bridge the spiritual realm, like we what we do in uh, our, uh, to hear and to speak. So you have to pray for to go. Yeah, he baptized you with the Holy Spirit. But after the baptism, do you operate? It's about you. You open yourself. Huh? Yeah, I can. I pray for you. I baptize you in the Holy Ghost and power because I have it. It can be connected. But you have to, like, I, can, I told you already, it's like, exactly. That is, it must be inside you. And I will still explain. <laughs> This one. Speaking in tongue is a secret code to the study. Though we have a biblical example of this happening. Yes, is there what I read in just after read. two after two now? We just read. I think like when God speaks in tongues, he's speaking. It's not compulsory to be God. It's not about God speaking, it's about us. That's what the old, that's what they did in Acts chapter two. Amen. They were speaking another language, and that attracted thousands of people. It's a secret code for evangelism that God used on that time for them to see the glory of God. Acts chapter two, verse four to eight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, 
And also, I want to let people understand the Almighty God is not what you can put in your confine to define how you operate. God's ways and our ways are not the same. Unless you surrender to him, you will go deeper and know how God operates. You want to see it in the Bible where it is? It's not only, it might be in you that practice. I told you when I went from, I was not born as a Christian. And I went to the church. God said, directed me to, be, to go to the church, crawling to the church, and I got it. Show me in the Bible where it is. It's this, uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I got the message through speaking of the word from God and also through what? Through vision. That God told me, this is the church you just go. And I crawled. I was not working for two years. So, I want you to come and show me in the Bible where there, where there is. It's not in the Bible. Exactly. Now you want to confine the Holy Spirit how you operate because of what you believe. You can never see the hand of God in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is why the song writer says, Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and do what? Yes. You have to, yours is to put the cup to God. Fill my cup. And when the cup gets to the brim, what will happen? When you fill the cup and get to the brim, what happens? Huh? You keep putting it and it's filled. What happens to it? It's filled. And that is the cup. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's what the Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. And not with alcohol. Why? When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, brethren, it's same like Thai language. Hallelujah. When you are filled with it, you know it, you will speak it. Hallelujah. I told you there are many people that have been in this country for several years. They cannot speak the Thai language because they don't surrender to it. They don't believe in it. So it's same. I know it's not linguistic, but it's how whatever you allow to come into your spirit, it comes. So this is the answer to, to that question. Hallelujah. Amen. No problem. Good. Is we have a lot of people participating. On based on Acts chapter two, yes, we could see that the the Bible verses ah everything there were earthly language, human language. They were what? They were just human language based on what is there. So how do we relate it when it is human language? They are not ah. one language. There are many languages. Many languages. People came there. Then some one language. It's multiple. Thousands of people are there and they can hear their own language. They said these people are Galileans. It's there in the Bible. Look at verse 7. I said they were amazed and marvelled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these we speak Galileans, and how hear we every man in our own tongues? I'm talking of thousands of people here. In our own tongue, wherein we are born. And if you go to verse 9, it says, Parthians are there, Medes are there, Elamites are there, and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia, in Pontius and in Asia, Phrygia, Fabilia, in Egypt and in Passover. It's a lot. Read your Bible, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not one language. We are talking about 200 people speaking different kinds of languages here. And they did not go to learn it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I ask one question. I don't know Korean language. 
and suddenly I start to speak Korea. It's, it's miracle. Am I saying something to somebody now? I don't go to Korea. I don't learn Korea. And I start to speak. It's not about, it might not be, it might be language of Myanmar that I'm even speaking. It's a miracle. That's why I said it's a vocal miracle. I said it from beginning. Am I right? So God will give you that as you move into the spiritual realm. So it's not compulsory because the one that they are speaking now, you don't hear. And now say this one is not speaking. Who am I to talk about what is speaking in spirit? It's between him and God. That's the Bible say, you are, you are praying in spirit, you are speaking in mystery. You have to open yourself. That's why I say, this sign shall follow those who believe. Hallelujah. It, it's not something, like I said last week, about people talking about offering, tithe. I said it's about people that believe. You don't need to talk about it. Some people believe it. They get their blessing. You don't believe it. Nobody force you. But don't say it's not working. It's working for us. Hallelujah. So, uh, praise the Lord. We are not here to what is, uh, poor, what is good or what is right. We tell you what the scriptures say, but it expanded when you experience it. The Bible says we know in parts. That tell me, I told you how God saved my own life. Now, is it in the Bible? Hello? So, <laughs> praise the Lord. But all I know that, just like that man that uh, Jesus opened, uh, eh, it's all I, all I know that he healed me. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know what the other thing. So you just have to understand how God operates by surrendering yourself to him. And I can tell you, and I will tell you, I was not born with speaking in tongues. For example, I thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit in my life. And that's why I can tell you about the experience. And nobody is giving me anything to benefit to talk about it. No. But I can tell you because I knew as I grew in the blood, getting closer, God praying and surrendering to God, it came out naturally. I was also a person that always said, God, what is this that gift? And when I really surrender and I go in prayer, I receive it. And I'm praying for the interpretation to receive that now. So no, nothing is about how your past salvation is a personal race. If you are satisfied with where you are, you are good to be there. But we that we still want to go deeper, just pray for us and we will move deeper in Jesus' name. So any other questions so that we can... Praise the Lord. So let's take our offering and then we can share our grace. Hallelujah. God, you are so good. Blessed be your name. You are so good, God, you are so good, you are so good, blessed be your, in heaven, in heaven you are the Lord, on earth you reign forever, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how great thou art, hallelujah, blessed be your name. You are so good, God, you are so, you are so good, blessed be you. You are so good, God, you are so, you are so good, Lord, blessed be In heaven, in heaven, you are the Lord. On earth you reign forever. O oh Lord, how great thou art. Blessed be, blessed be your name. 
Father, we thank you because you have been so good to us. We appreciate you for the wonderful privilege you have given unto us to learn at your feet once again today. It is written in your word that the entrance of the word of God, it gives light. Daddy, we thank you because your light that has come into our life today has taken away every darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you said we should arise and shine. We pray that as we surrender to you, as we decide to walk with you, as we decide to go deeper in spirit with you, Lord, according to this, you said you will not leave us comfortless. And you have never changed. You did it for the disciples of old. On the day of Pentecost, Daddy, your Holy Spirit came like a rushing mighty wind. None of them was left behind. I pray for myself and for your children that are here looking after you. Fill us more until we want no more in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit Fill us with your power. Fill us with the gift of your Holy Spirit that we have been discussing from all the part 1 to part 11 in the mighty name of Jesus. And even the one that we are still going to look at until the end of this class of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you are a God of purpose. And your purpose for giving us your gift of the Holy Spirit is because we are the work of your hand us to manifest your glory. So, Daddy, you did it for your children. Uh, 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 Peter, he stood up. He said, why are you all, we are not drunk. <laughs> the promise of God, which our Lord Jesus Christ has promised us, the one that you kill. And because of that, 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus. I pray from today in the mighty name of Jesus. The gift of the Holy Spirit of God. I pray that rest upon us right now. It will attract souls into your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Even before we preach, even before we start to speak, say the name of Jesus and what Jesus is doing in our life. Daddy, as we all say, we are meant for signs and wonder. They will see your signs in our life and they will be attracted to your light in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every one of us. Lord, as we are growing in you, let us continue to grow in the Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Draw us closer to yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for the privilege you have given unto us tonight to bring our offering also unto you. My Father and my God, you are not an unrighteous God not to reward our labor of love. And also, you are not a God that is a man that will not lie. Lord, I pray, according to your promise and your word for all of us that have given our seed today, give us harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. In good measure, press down, shaking together and running over in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the offering and use it for your glory. Father, I thank you for your son that you have used to bring for us the fruit Lord, we pray that you will sanctify the food with the blood of Jesus. Lord, bless the pocket of and also, Lord, in return, reward the in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we commit ourselves into your hand as we are going to all our various homes. Lord, according to your promise and your word, go before us. Make every good care to be smoothing in the name of Jesus. Lord, let us not leave your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit Thursday faith clinic into your almighty hand. Lord, cause us to come by faith. And according to what we have told him, you said there will be showers of blessings. Let there be showers of blessings. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus, Lord, mighty name we pray. As we share the grace together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty God keep us and protect us. May His face continue to shine upon us. 
we all shall live, we will not die. To declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. In this year, 2024, and several decades, several decades, several decades to come until the Lord tarries. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shalom and congratulations. You are blessed.